Shanta, a woman of grit and grace. Born in a village in southern India, Shanta lost her father at the age of six and grew up in poverty. She was married in her late teens and moved to the village of Kodapatinam, a two-hour drive from the coastal city of Chennai. Shanta's move to this village would eventually change its fate. After a couple years of living in the small village with a population of only 130 and not yet 20 years of age with two children, Shanta found her family living way below the poverty line. In a society where women were expected to stay home, Shanta decided to work at a local government office without pay. At work one day, she heard about the idea of a microfinance self-help group for women. They would have to form a group of 20 people. Members would contribute 10 rupees or 15 cents each. The local bank would then match the pool rupee for rupee. Members could pitch business ideas. If approved, they could use the available funds for the business and use the revenue to repay the loan over time. Shanta decided this was a great idea for the women in her village where everyone lived below the poverty line. But convincing women to pitch in 10 rupees was tougher than she anticipated. For households living on less than a dollar a day, many entirely unemployed, parting with 15 cents was a tall order. And with only 30 families in the village, there were only 30 doors on which to knock. <laughs> In Kota Patinam, the female literacy rate is 68%, compared with 88% among males, according to the latest census. Before Shanta formed the group, women rarely worked outside the home. It took her two years to convince them. Since rice was easily accessible from their own farmland, the women agreed to save rice and sell that instead. Soon everyone had 10 rupees to put down, and the Kota Patina Microfinance Group was off to the races. Having picked up some basic accounting skills from the owner of the local grocery store, Shanta learned the rest and supervised the new group. The first business idea, buying cows to sell milk, generated enough in revenue to repay loans and double the income in the women's households. Subsequent business ideas included sewing machines to sell clothing and buying audio systems to rent out for village festivities. Learning more from each business and becoming profitable meant that Shanta went from extreme poverty to being able to build herself a concrete home and educate her children, helping her son to become the first in the family to graduate from college. A few years later, Shanta spearheaded a new project on a larger scale, nabbing an outsourcing deal for a plastic bag manufacturer. Watch the next segment of the story to find out about how that new unit transformed the lives of other women.